So focusing in more on this, this water energy connection, I, I kind of touched on this at the beginning, but so producing water needs energy. Uh, if you're pumping from underground, pumping from a river, you have to treat it, you have to transport it somewhere. Uh, in the, the end use, you've got to you know, put it up in a storage tower somewhere, you've got to build more infrastructure. All these things need energy. And then when you're producing energy, you need water. So if you're extracting crude oil, uh, you know, fracking, obviously, you're injecting large quantities of water into the ground. Um, cooling is a huge use of water. So if you go to any power plant or any plant that needs to be cooled, they'll often have these giant cooling ponds that process a lot of water. Hydropower, clearly. And then emission controls as well. So uh, CO2 <coughs> capture and scrubbing of um, say like uh, NOx and SOx compounds would need water as well. So this is kind of a, unfortunately a, a positive feedback loop that the more water you produce, the more energy you need, and the more energy you produce, the more water you need. <coughs> and you can do some kind of rough calculations just based on water consumption and, and electricity production values. Um, this is kind of back of the envelope, but approximately when we generate energy, we're, we're using about two gallons of water for every kilowatt hour. So I'm coming back to the styrofoam container energy, or styrofoam container example from before. So we said producing and using one of these styrofoam containers is about a megajoule of energy. So to produce that energy, that's about half a gallon of water. So every one of these containers has essentially a half gallon of water embedded in it. And that's not direct water use, that's just for the energy that went into it. So if, if you were using any other water to, to wash this or in the manufacturing process, that, that adds to this, this burden. So like Professor Anastas was saying, if you're in the United States and you're buying styrofoam containers from China, uh, you're in fact importing water from China because they're producing their energy there to do all the manufacturing and then it's being shipped into the United States. Another really common area where we would see this direct energy and water connection would be through something like desalination, where uh, you know, what we saw at the beginning, the oceans are 97% of the water in, in the earth. If you want to take advantage of that, get some fresh water, you'd force it through a membrane, separate out the salt, uh, get less saline solution. But you have to be applying uh, pretty high pressures to, to do this. So um, looking at typical seawater in the US or Middle East, you'd have to be applying um, you know, 600 to 1,200 pounds per square inch of pressure. That's obviously a very large energy requirement. And you start seeing this, um, don't, don't worry about all the differences between these, but this is just some um, sales materials for different membranes that are used in desalination. And the main metric you use to compare all these membranes is kilowatt hours per thousand gallons of water. So. Uh, each gallon of, of water that you produce by this technique is going to have uh, a pretty substantial amount of energy consumption.